New Year, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, Herbs and Aquaria of All Kinds. Those are Herbs and Aquaria. All right, so the thing I'm going to do today is going to be on my 29. Um, I haven't been home much lately, and uh, the fish tank has actually been doing really well as far as its ecology. Uh, you can see there's a ton of algae growing in the back. There was a lot on the um, on the front of the glass. But I scraped the uh, I scraped the uh, the algae off of the front of the glass, so that way you can see everything. But I was like, okay, now that I'm actually getting some algae growing in this tank, maybe I can get some algae eating fish. So I got three of these uh, autosynclus catfish. I like them because they're little, and they're not gonna get huge like the uh, the plecos. The bristlenose nose plecos don't get as uh, don't get as large as those common black plecos that everybody gets. But at the same time. They do get a decent size, maybe about like five inches. And I'm like, ah, I only have a 29 gallon tank. So, well, it could live in here fine, but it would just take up too much space for the other fish and everything. So, I decided to get those little guys. And they'll keep the algae under control. And they also just look pretty cool just sticking to the glass like that. And they like to stick there in groups. So, it looks, looks pretty sweet. Um, I had one male Miley left that, uh, orange molly in the back this guy i've actually had this guy for over a year um that's one of the fish that was born from that uh that big female that i had before and i still have a little isei in here where's he where's little isei I'm trying to find him isei where is he this tiny little black molly where is he he's in the back there he is anyway but what i know is that isei and uh his younger brother who was bigger ironically <laughs> Uh, are both males, so I'm like, okay, Issei was kind of dwarfed because I kept him in that 10 gallon for uh, a little bit too long, and uh, you know, he's bigger than the other fish, but it actually works out to his benefit because he's so small and can turn on a dime, the other fish can't catch him. But I just didn't want you know, one day you know, he gets a hold of him and little Issei gets hurt or whatever. So, what I decided to do was I got um three female mollies and put them in there that way there'd be two two for them to chase i was gonna get four because the rule of thumb is to have them in trios you know two per male but um when i went to the store they only had a few and the rest of them were male so i'm like all right just give me these three so at least then one will chase two there'll be another one there and it'll balance itself out like you know j just enough i'm gonna get one more like soon just to make it a little bit better on that uh that's the third female. But here's one of the females. It's a Dalmatian molly. The interesting thing is when I got these guys, I noticed that the tanks that they had didn't have algae in them. Which, you know, some good fish stores, you know, they're just really good with their tanks. Where they just, they, they feed them all the necessary foods and everything. But they just don't have a whole lot of algae growth. The minute I put this guy in here, he just started just grazing on the algae. Because that's what uh, a lot of these guys do. As you see, I still have the clown loach. I'm going to get to him in a second. But, um, yeah. They, uh... They tend to, um, like, graze on algae and stuff, too. So I was like, hey, neat. Um, that's another fish that can actually get rid of some of the algae. Maybe not on the glass, but on the rocks and stuff where it's easier for them to grip it. Um, I got some Omega-1 um, uh, shrimp pellets because this guy over here, um, I noticed his stomach was a little thin and he wasn't eating enough. So I was like, okay. Um, obviously the floating foods I'm, um, I use are getting eaten up by the mollies and, and my gourmia and, uh, of course the black skirts take a couple pecks at it and stuff like that before it gets to the bottom. So I was like, okay, this guy's not eating enough. So I got him those, especially for the fact that now I got these three spotted cord cats and they're awesome. And the cool thing is they actually draw the, uh, the, um, clown loach out more because he actually he'll school with them and the cool thing is it's like yeah now he has friends but there's they need more food as as bottom dwellers and the shrimp pellet sinks so that's why i got them for the for these guys so that way they'll have something nice to eat so you know just give them since there's three cory cats and one small clown loach i just give them uh i just give them maybe like four four or five um and i'll probably do this maybe like every other day because they're still going to scavenge on you know whatever pellets get caught between the rocks or flakes or whatever other food that the other fish 
that swim in the middle and the top of the tank miss. Um, you see I rearranged some stuff like this piece of wood has some nice green, like bright green algae growing on it. So I'm like, hey, cool. And it's not all jelly looking, so I'm, I'm glad it's not blue-green algae. It's not those massive uh, colonies of good bacteria, which are good for your tank, but they just look disgusting. So um, I was like, hey, I can do something with this. And I wanted to put something new in here, which is why I got the skull. And I put all those beads in there so that way it looked like it kind of like illuminates the inside a little bit. It looks nice. Um, even though I'm not big on fake ornaments and everything like that, you can't really find a real uh, uh, jaguar squall just uh, just outside or offhand. So I was like, all right, let me just put that in there. And that kind of makes it look like the bottom of the Amazon River or something like that. You see, there's like, there's like jewels in there. And like I said, the beads. And what I did with the wood is I was like, hmm, well, I know I'll, like I want to have them have bigger areas to hide in. And the only guy who can hide under here is my clown loach because he'll go inside find a crevice and bury himself in that crevice in the wood overnight like if i pull this piece of wood out um when he's in there i gotta shake it for him to fall out like he really just jams himself in there so i lift it up a little bit and put on that rock and now it looks like a nice like rotted out log or something like a nice rotted out like old tree and i put some stones in the front so that way it's not completely open down there but uh, it's pretty nice because now I can actually see fish go under here and interact with each other. But it's still nice and dark and it actually has more space down there now where um, a bunch of the bottom dwellers can just go in there and just chill. And even sometimes some of the mid swimmers, like the, uh, the mollies, will go down there and relax. Like especially for the females because, you know, when the females like to hide when they're getting chased by the male too much, they, they need some place that they can go inside or just get away from them. The, uh, this, um, cave over here, it's funny, like, I put this cave in here, but it, like, barely gets any use, like, like, the only one who'll use it once in a while is my upside-down catfish, who is over there. You can probably make out his body, but he's not moving much. Come on, bud, swim, do something. And he doesn't want to move. Okay, so, yeah, that's what's going on in this tank. I like the way it came out, a lot of nice colors, looks really cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I covered every new fish I got. Yeah, these. This is doing pretty well, so I'm actually ecstatic with the way the whole thing looks. And that's why I got the females. <laughs> um, as far as the new tank, the new tank is the same. It's nice and clear. This one, um, you know, its algae growth came in a long time ago. It's nice and stable. It, it, it's doing just fine. My newts are hiding somewhere, but they're nice and big, and they just look awesome. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Before I can end this video. Ah, there's one in the back. You see him? Right there. See him sticking his head out? Yeah. yeah it's awesome in here. It's like a jungle now. <laughs> now before I remember, I used to get some comments where some people would be like, oh, fake plants suck, this, that, and the third. But it takes time for real plants to grow. So what I did was, when I started this tank, um, if you guys watched any of my early vi earlier videos, I would take the um the fake plants and put them in and put in my new real plants and as the new real plants grew in i would start taking out um uh the plastic plants little by little until they filled up the space because i wasn't just just concerned of how it looked and i know it looked kind of weird with real and fake plants together but the newts needed hiding places so if i need to use plastic plants for that that's what i was going to do same thing I did with this tank when I first got this tank settled. They're all looking pretty nice. Yeah, guys. Um, oh, if you ever have any questions on what fish you can actually put together in a tank, or uh, any other questions, water changes, and anything has to do with aquaria and stuff, and even the herpetology stuff like snakes and lizards and all that other stuff, um, just uh, leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. Later, guys.